Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues in which we're playing as everyone's favorite northern nation, MacArthur. Now the challenge recording, this nation's not done yet. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's not finished with it, but I know that the devs have said this nation is not quite there yet, but you know what, I'm a sucker for playing the Enclave and, and if it's in base game now, I might as well try it out. So, we're building America today. There was once a nation that held that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That nation was mauled in the Great War, but in the end, we in the Enclave will never stop fighting for the American people. From a base into a home. Once a string of bases across America connected the U.S. government together, and many of these held out until the fall of Navarro. These embers of patriotism were kindled by Santiago and into new light, which guard the waste while it burns. The uh, last great American dynasty. Many wastelanders know America took a fatal blow in 2077, its armies and people burning a nuclear fire, but most of them don't know the tale of the men and women who kept the dream alive in the darkness that followed. <clears throat> the Richardsons served America after the Great War preserving its dream and protecting its citizens, whether or not they knew it. An enclave of the best and brightest who would keep the torch of freedom lit until it could burn a bride again. They were too, they were close, too, you know. The last Richardson had a plan to save the wasteland, a weapon that would kill the super mutants and feral ghouls who held back recovery, until it all fell apart. Nobody knows what happened to the rig, a brotherhood of steel commando raid, remnants of the master's army. Perhaps it was the rangers cloaked their hatred, cloaking the hatred of America and their sweet lives of liberty. Certainly the NC had no problems pouring north with tribal, brotherhood, paladins, and others in tow. The enclave killed many, but we had to, we had to leave. With the chain of command and disarray, Santilco took off and led the fight east, or flight east. With it, let us honor her now and how she worked to save America in the west. Took as many young combatants as she could. State population was about 5,000, but organized weaponry would also serve the survivors best. Advanced power armor and Winchester plasma rifles. Yes, please. The first fa families. The bombs glanced in Missoula during the Great War, so while the city starved, its building survived. Today, the city is dominated by the first families, survivors of those who planned properly for the bombs as we sip on a cup of coffee for ourselves. Good stuff. Good stuff. But men to match these mountains. Oh. Oh, what is this? If you're learning about this, please go right ahead. Think of what we could do with a such superpower. Or such power. When well, Enclave fled the west coast after the fall of Navarro, some fought on. Patriots didn't give up on America journey east by bird to bird, by truck or by foot. Thunder and gun battles echoed across the Great Plains as a car for the Brotherhood's despotism to reach Chicago, but Santiago and those who stayed. In the name of fighting a rear guard action, they stayed in Navarro. With support from the Secretary of the Interior, they acted as western flanks of the Enclave. Gone was the president, but in his place was a land lightly touched by radiation, home to happy, healthy children. All land world soldiers never died, they just faded away. For something odd happened in the region. Over time to survive, MacArthur began to trade with the surrounding towns and ranches. As relationships followed trade, soldiers turned into ranchers, medics, and doctors. When Missoula asked for help against Hel Heaven's Gate in 2268, she was protecting uh, her retired veterans as much as she was the people of her town. Missoula's ranches now feed the despot. And she turned the prisoners to coal mining. As much as I want to do that one, we're actually doing quite okay on factories. We could always use more, you know, but you know, I'm going to go civvies for now. And then what? Missoula Market, Montana Patriot. Ooh. A shipment from Chicago, God Garden. Actually, what what are we right now? We're the Colonel. We're, we're intellectuals. There's refugees, the first families, as well as that as well. Um, hospital papers would be more feared than a thousand bayonets. Uh, we could do that one. God's Garden. For the first families, Missoula is an odd town for the wasteland. The town had good unpopulated farmland, herds of healthy bison, and forests for timber nearby. Nobody went hungry, but in every society, some are more equal than others, and Missoula is no exception. The first families descended from the scavengers who turned out of the great after the war, control the best lands, the best force, the best mines. Colonel Santiago's detachment only increased the division, for who but the rich could afford the Army Corps of Engineers. Moreover, the increased security Santiago brought turned the region into a magnet for refugees fleeing Heaven's Gate and the Cons. The lucky ones found jobs and switched up their farms. The unlucky ones, well, there was a winner every year. One of Santiago's more considered decision was the use of auxiliaries to train with local equipment. She favored drawing force from the first families, but others counseled that the refugees would be reliable to whoever offered a better life. First families are reliable. But weren't we refugees as well? Nope. Team October. Uh, MacArthur Army Base is home to a unique set of greenhouses which grow tropical fruits not seen in the Rockies for almost two centuries. Oranges, avocados, bananas, and more are served on the Colonel's table courtesy of what the natives call God's Garden. And then uh, the Colonel isn't the only Santiago and MacArthur. Her daughter, Ellen, rose through the ranks of the Enclave. Ellen could have requested a soft post in Raven Rock in Chicago, but she chose to serve with her mother, MacArthur. There she works with the Colonel to protect the people of Montana, a true inspiration for all Americans. There are those who say that she's gone native. Those who whisper indeed that she may be a mutant, but if that were true, how could she handle the Enclave's weaponry so effectively? Uh, Ellen's unit, the Team October, guards the wasteland and handles threats that need a special touch. Diplomacy with the first families, a raid on a metal mouth uh, outpost, trade mission to the bazaar, well, why not? The Rangers always led the way and always will. I'm glad she's on our side. 
Martha Santiago. She went from Chicago, might not be bad. Yeah, that'd be pretty good to do. Um, uh, that's not bad. You get a lot of resources. So I'm not sure what the scope of this campaign is going to look like. Oh, Sergeant Grant and his boys have found a home in 5.0. Oh, so that comes in 5.0. So we'll do this campaign again some other time as well, just so you know. Oh, I'll probably plan to do this quite a bit then. Missoula population. Well, maybe we'll go with the Missoula market. Missoula's market's already the best in Montana, with some further renovations. It could be the largest as well. Uh, fun, the Crow Trucking Company. Here is a Montana, the Crows, whose trucks connect the northern north settlements. The garage in Missoula produces a handful of trucks a month, both proper investment and enclave engineering. We could double or even triple that. This will not help just this will help not just the people of the north, it'll also cement the colonel's rule. Little Reno? The Salvatores came east from Reno with us after the fall of Arms. Now one of them seeks to set up a charming little club to give people a taste of the flavors of the West. Never stop fighting for the American people. And one of, the, one of the greatest tragedies that so much of the Northern Commonwealth tolerates slavery. Whether the servants of Heaven's Gate, serfs, of the Khan, a Canadian proletariat, thousands outside our borders choke under bondage, we must open our hearts and settlements to them. McSweeney Machine Shop. Oh, the description. Down on the farms, one of the best uses for refugees is to work on the farms and ranches outside Missoula. We can provide them a new life as employees of the first family. And light up the rattlesnakes. Cool. Attacks on the caravans. The store mongers of Middle Mouse become more aggressive as of late, perhaps inspired by the Montana chapter. We need to decide who to protect. The Crow Truck and Company, which knits Montana together, are outlying farmsteads. Protecting the caravans will gain the first family support, but this will turn more people into refugees and cost us support. Ooh. Caravans will gain us first family support. Because right now we have a couple of natural spirits. Go east, young man. We also have manufacturing process, which is good. And of course, support from the Secretary of the Interior. MacArthur is but a fraction of the Chicago Enclave's power, but serves as a vital role as a Western outpost of the U.S. The Colonel can always get more support, assuming that they act in the best interest of the security of the interior. Also, we have this one down here, too. Um, reduce reliance and stuff like this from them, so. Uh, protect the homesteads. Ooh. Protecting the caravans will gain first time support, but this will turn more people into refugees and cost us support. Caravans are our lifeblood. Um. Well, since we're here, Stormmongers and Metalmouth. Looks like a Chinese flag. Blinding Hail. Metalmouths. Steel Joe. Look like Cyborg. Ooh. People. Intellectuals. People. First families. <sighs> Which knits Montana together. They are our lifeblood versus this one. You know what? That's a lot of war sport gone. And if anything. I'd rather not lose manpower, so caravan are our lifeblood. A shipment from Chicago. Chicago will be glad to send more assistance out west, but that may come with some understandable requests for more assistance with the great work. But aren't all Americans in this together? The survivalist bunkers. While some wonder why Colonel Santiago knew how to find the old survivalist bunkers, none could add their value to the fighting men and women who keep watch over the region. For most of Frank's, for most of Frank's firearms, some say that Frank's family were held in Camp Little Guangdong when the bombs fell. By the way, he tells it. They were loyal citizens. Whatever his family's backstory is, he's long been the best weaponsmith in Missoula. The last professional army. One advantage of the MacArthur Detachment's military force is that it is by and large still a trained military force. This gives us a, uh, gives us a rival over the rabble uh, uh, that surrounds our oasis of Spilly and the Marshals. Led by Sheriff he Heather, the Marshals serve as civilian auxiliaries to MacArthur and enforce the Colonel's authority in Missoula and beyond. Increasing their ranks will bolster the U.S. Army's limited manpower out west and Chicago reinforcements at Mar Martha Santiago's request. The security of the interior sent equipment west, of course. This may require further attention to Chicago's directives. A little slice of heaven. Citizens of Montana, this is your Colonel speaking. Have you ever thought how privileged you are? How fortunate. You live in the greatest city in America, and indeed, it can be said that Montana is the only America in the Gibsonville outpost. Gibsonville has been abandoned since the Great War, but it still guards the trade route from Idaho. With proper fortifications in the region, we can cut Heaven's Gate off in the passes. The Treaty of Fort MacArthur, Chapo Wagner, sent a delegate with a most unusual proposal. <clears throat> Our shipments to Chicago have been long been harassed traveling through the Dakotas, hindering MacArthur's contribution to national reconstruction, and there are some valuable minerals in there, or some of the lands they rule. Uh, should we go forward with agreement? The only real downside would be that the Sioux will become more powerful, but it will just be a problem for the riffraff between us and the Heartland. We will gain resource rights, providing us with metal and water if we agree to this, of course. So, um, I don't think the Dakotas... Uh, technically, well, yeah. Dakotas. Well, the Dakotas don't exist right now. And the Sioux? Sioux Valley? South Sioux City? Quar quar quarantine Center? What? What? There's a quarantine center. What the heck? Timothy Pennywise. Whoa. Anyways, um, so, accidentally deal. 
Or... Won't they shoot us next? The Sioux will become more powerful. But I'm going for the Rift Rap between us and the Heartland. Honestly, if we have a strong middleman that does not harass our stuff, it might be worth it. They can deal with the other stuff. We have other things to deal with. Is that an excellent idea? Uh, oh, I have a standing rock. Standing. Standing rock. Ah, oh, there she is. Uh, um, hmm. Timber Lake. Add production and stuff. Give the MacArthur attachment rights to the resources here. Well, Custer's Legacy. You know, I'll go with this one for now. We have to play the game right, like, like a whole meta type of deal. Make sure that we get what we want in the end. But we're currently doing the Marshals. I think I read this one earlier, Chicago Reinforcements, but I definitely want to do a little size of Heaven. Citizens of Montana. This is your Colonel speaking. Have you thought about how privileged you are? How fortunate? You live in the greatest state in America. Indeed, it can only be said that, of course, like we said earlier, Montana is the only America. And a letter from a storm. Or shelter from a storm. Because I want to go to war quickly. The stormmongers of Brave Cole is a threat to all of the wasteland and to our fair citizens of Montana. We're going to help the great, uh, help the great work. We're going to have to liberate the peoples of the Great Falls. Steel and fire from the gods. Yellowstone is home to one of Poseidon Energy's greatest pre-war projects. But the idealists and dreamers who occupy Yellowstone today do nothing with it. Guys' riches are there for the taking. A power source that could file the industry of the north. But, oh, also, I guess if we didn't do the Gibsonville outpost. Whatever, I forgot how to do this. Whatever, I want to go to war. I want to go to war. I want to have a little bit of a conflict. A little bit of lovely conflict at the time of this recording. So, yeah. And we also have a couple planes, too. We have plenty of time to build ourselves up. I got quite a bit of power over. And I actually increased our guys to 20 combo width. It's either 17 and a half or 20 combo width. So I figured, you know what, bigger, not always better, but we're like them thick. So uh, other than that, and all honestly, we should do relatively okay. I don't want to lose that much manpower, but the reason why I want to go to war as well is because I want to start coring their territory. I just want to start coring territory. Ooh, we're Lord of the Waste, so we get more manpower, more industry, all that type of good stuff, as we all know. So uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, let's go to war. Kill them off. We could maybe, like, pair drop onto them, but, you know, whatever. And that's why I'm keeping a lot of political power up here to save it for later, probably. Or we go to every cap for the army. And then again, we have slowly started to run out of places to build factories in as well. So, there is that issue as well. But that's alright. Even the infantry won't do terribly, 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 hopefully. <sighs> At least I hope so. Um, here. You find enemies, beat them up. I want that army XP. Nothing like a good lot of army XP, especially when you have power armor. Especially good power armor. Like, not, not all this is good power armor. I mean, sometimes, some of it is, like, scavenge PA power armor, which is god-awful. But some of this stuff is really nice stuff. We've lost 13 guys versus 1,000, which is very nice. Um, you guys taking the harder route by trying to attack over river. And then trying to attack over river again, perhaps, as well. Ooh, go right there. Yeah, why not? Why not? Keep going. Doing a great job. I think we're about to win anyways, but do this anyways because you can. Uh, 11 divisions with power armor, 5 divisions with infantry, which is okay. Not ideal. I would personally prefer all power armor, but you know, that's just me. And probably a lot of you as well. I'll then maybe take a maelstrom F full space. We should do okay. Uh, let's go into vehicles because you can. Oh, and the Great Falls is a trader, which is very good for us as well. Uh, let's go to pacification. Guards are fine, but I prefer militia, personally. Ah! Good so far. And yeah, done a good Conrad. I was saving a bab. Is that it? No, it's not. But yes, it is. Sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A jewel in a crown. Chicago reinforcements, yes, please. And like we said, uh, stealing fire from the gods. Yellowstone Park's core territories. That'd be nice. Um, let's get this one done first, though, the Chicago reinforcements, and read they fight for freedom. Having a promise to you that America yet lives, at uh, great effort, the Secretary of the Interior has sent proof that the Enclave lives. Montana. And no, not just MacArthur, Army Base. Right now, the Enclave troops are not from, from the Chicago, the gleaming heart of America. These fine men and women have one mission, the restoration of American peace and order. Just remember, though. When you see the Enclave, you see the United States government. We are authorized to restore order and civility by any means necessary. Just stay out of the way and let us do our job and interfere with the Uncle's mission. You will be dealt with harshly. Together we'll restore the glory of this nation. This great nation. One problem at a time. More ruler. Ooh, we get some, a little more power armor. Ooh, and some more gunships. And the MCA Chicago Dispatch 1. Change the support for the uh, sec Secretary of the Interior by 5%. Lose 3 energy, 1 metal. So be it. Ooh, those, 
That looks like a different type of flamer. Um, will they use flamers or grenades? Oh, we get a great bear. I gotta go with a great bear. Auto grenade. That just, that sounds like so much fun. I can't pass that out. Oh, look at this. 31st Peoria and Raven. Oh, eh, not as good as what we have already. There you go. So, Yellowstone it is, I see. You guys, take the main way. You all, five divisions, start here. You know what, actually, that should be okay. I'll take you guys. Small, small groups. Small groups doing that, that stuff. And it looks like there is a waterway right there too, and they should be fine. Beautiful. And train. Perfect. Alright. Get rid of the core stuff. Uh, disabled. That's nice. Thank God we'll actually have some money coming in, maybe. And economic precisions. Hey, two more guys. Nice. Um, resistance is getting higher, which is not good. But compliance is almost as high as our resistance, which is, no, not bad. Um, post that. Heavy weapons assistance. Not bad. Grenade machine guns. Depending against a brotherhood. Uh, support the Brotherhood's enemies. We could. People Montana, we are all that stands between you and the destruction of our great state. Do you have mutants occupying your homes? Your children conscripted into the cults? Your wife or husband sent to a penal battalion to mine for uranium? Of course not. That's why you're here to help. And help you will. We do want to build this area too, just just for slightly faster roads. I mean, eventually we're going to run out of things to build anyway, so I'm not really con too concerned about that. Keep building up that uh, civilian factory and build one of these too. Because we can keep using more stuff here. We need anti tank rifles, we need support equipment, so we're just lacking some stuff. Just normal. Like manpower. How much are we missing? 800? Oh, that's not too bad. It's getting worse, though. Uh, call up veterans. We do that. We get 5% more non core manpower, 1% more recruitable population. You lose 5% attack and defense, and 5% organization, which is not great. And you lose 20 special forces minimum capacity. So let's max out on what we have right now for. Um, Oh, I just lost it in my mind. What the heck? Just max out what we have for the number of power armor divisions we have in the field. And it goes bye-bye. 12%, 13%. You know what? We might just want to do this too. Sneaky dudes? Well, I don't know about sneaky dudes. If you can come up with a better name for... Ooh, Lockreed. Um, our intelligence agency, please let me know. CIA could work, but Lockreed. Lockreed. Fighters, carrier fighters. Eh, that's not bad. We don't have to spend the political power now, so we don't, we're not going to, which is okay with us. We still have some unassimilated refugees, which actually I'm not particularly necessarily opposed to, because it can technically help us get us more population in each state, but not that much more. Core population, 57,000, but, you know, whatever. How much would they, would they stick to core? 62 is not bad. Stealing fire from the gods, of course. Um, support the Brotherhood's enemies. But yeah. Basic tools are very nice. Um, output, sure, why not? The biggest issue is just manpower. And it would be foolish if we went to war right now because we have no manpower. We need to get more compliance first, which we will, we will get in time. So we're going to do this one as well. And of course, we have this one done, and we'll do that one probably off screen. <coughs> Increase research speed is not bad. Uh, can. Canadarian airships. Huh. Lakota auxiliaries. Heavy weapons assistance, though. That sounds like fun. That really does sound like a lot of fun. What do we want to do? Lessons from refugees. Let's do that one. Not everyone who fled to the colonel's domain is an uncouth auto mouth to feed. Some of them can teach us a thing or two. Not bad. Of course, we go to war. It does lower our stability, which what does hurt our slight compliance gain as well as resistance decay. So, <clears throat> and it's already going down here. All right? Nice. Beautiful. Is this going up? Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Auto laser rifles, yes, please. Um, how much army speed do we have? We don't have a ton. If that's a case. You guys are fine. Spec ops, no thanks. Robots will keep you for now. Rapid response, not worth it. Militia's not bad. Uh, 
divisions that we do have, I don't mind throwing some infantry, another infantry battalion on them. But what do we throw on some fire teams? Do we have enough fire teams? Yeah, we do. That's good for defense. Good for defense. Uh, military science. How much money do we actually have? 18 caps a month is not good. <coughs> Excuse me. Huh? That's not good. Hit and run those. Very good. Um, yeah, that'd be good as well. Still training, still training, still training. And let's get to this one first. Or just say, screw it, let's go to war anyways. Annie Parsons, very good. And who do we have? Robert Gibbs? Why do I call you Robert? You're Matthew. Put down a crap ton of resistance. Roughly 0.2 a day. Oh, no, yeah, 0.2. <coughs> roughly, 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 roughly. And screw it, let's go to war anyways. They start attacking us, doesn't mean we have to attack them. They are attacking us, especially our power armor divisions, which is good. It's very good to see, actually. Ah, Martha Santiago, undoubtedly afraid of our prowess, offers us tribute. Energy weapons and caps, which we can use against the Brotherhood. Oh, we will, but surely she knows that these weapons can be turned against her as well. The Brotherhood, then MacArthur. Ooh, we get 50 more things. Advanced energy weapons? Very nice. But we'll deal with them soon. Also, we'll do this one like we did said earlier. Light of Civilization, not bad. Um, the new home for old men. I like that one. A detachment of Enclave soldiers remain on the west coast. Mercenaries, perhaps it's time to call them home rather than waste their time serving the Salvatores at Van Graaffs. After all, we can think of no better men in Garrison Granite Company than these fine fellows. The Guitar Factory. Bozeman was home to a mighty guitar factory before the war, and craftsmen continue this tradition to this day. Although some of the songs are surprisingly unorthodox, none can deny the sweet sounds they play. Prometheus Bound. With control of Yellowstone, the Colonel must decide what to do with the Hesphestus project. So many options are before her. Uh, at long last, our scientists have discovered the secrets of the Hesphestus project. What shall we do with this power? Chicago prefer we divert the energy back to them. A valid resource for the war against the Midwest Brotherhood, but Rodriguez would argue that energy serves a viable role for the region and could further industrialize development. In this scenario, we might still send resources to Chicago, but it would be processed uranium, coal, and other riches pulled from the mountains, and there is Maria, the colonel's daughter. Maria proposes that we share the power of the people. Power? People power? A novel idea that might at least gain us some support among the locals, but with certainly the anger of the Secretary of the Interior, can we truly risk that? So where are we at with the Secretary? I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Like, this is not bad. I, I really like what's being done here with uh, MacArthur, but uh, we lose stuff. Research speed, support for Chicago, not bad. We need this to beat the Brotherhood. Chicago needs this to fight the brother straight. Oh my gosh. We share with the fellow Americans. Time to do that one. But we really, we really don't need this extra stability right now. Um, elites, people, doesn't really matter to me too much right now either. So, need, we need this to beat the Brotherhood? Chicago needs this to beat the Brotherhood. Look at that. The Enclave. Oh God, I love the Enclave so much. Anyways, um, the Great uh, Falls Restoration. Great Falls' position on the Missouri River provides ample hydroelectric power for use in a variety of industrial projects. No wonder the brother occupied this town. How fortunate that they have been liberated under our rule. Now, we've yet to core this land, but we're getting very close. And also, we did take out the other southern group, which are we're looking not too bad. In all honesty, um, I do want to do pretty much all the events so that we can like do stuff like this with uh, Canadarian can airships. Winnipeg has a mighty force of airships which connect to the Great North, since we will not be stable stabilizing the rebellion in the near future. Perhaps we should work out a deal to buy some other airships. They could provide some useful to connect. Could prove useful to connect our desperate settlements. And like said, we'll gain airships and intellectual support. Uh, let's pitch nice historians, but we need historian refugees. Um, so, Lakota Auxiliaries. It has come to the colonel's attention that she could use a force reliance solely on her for support. Why not turn to Shapa Wagner for help? It, it, we'll have a prize, but you get what we pay for. So, four fathers, Jackson's Harv, and three others. So, no, 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 no. Bumble Purgers. Oh! Well, there goes Hyde Chapel. I might want to take them out because I don't know if anyone wants to kill these guys off, but I kind of want to. So we'll see. Uh, no meds in the far north. But, anyways, where are we at? Can we grow this yet? 82% is not good enough. Over here, 95, 47 political power. Is it worth it for less than 1,000? Not really, but you need to do this so you can get to these other locations as well. This is almost there. Almost there. For 20,000, that's worth it. You get more resources. Um, so that's actually pretty good too. Oh, do we not go this one? Yeah, we do go this one. Five percent. Yeah, we're getting there. Happy uh, December first, twenty-two seventy-eight. Not bad, not bad, not bad. We def we definitely have enough political power now. <clears throat> and your navy must be core. Some sort of resistance. It's not connected to the owner's capital. It's coastal. Well, this is a core, is it not? So we should be able to core it. 
Don't have to core this one. And can't core that one quite yet. Part standardization is not bad. Keep doing that type of stuff. And 87%. We're definitely getting down here too. Um, over here at 64%. That's not really anything. Um, yeah, overall not bad. Not bad. I'm a, bit, a little concerned why we can't core this one yet. But I guess we'll get there in time. It's going to turn shot on foot, which is very good. How much money do we actually get every quarter? 14. Could be better. That could definitely be better. But, you know, yeah, this is making sense why we can't core it. It falls, nothing there. Totally fine. At least we're not at zero manpower. At least that's a good thing. We do have 18 power armor divisions, which is super, super nice. Actually, wait, these are. Oh, this is Grant's first company. That's fine. Yeah, no. Oh, rapid response division, so that sucks. Scrap shacks. A little bit ahead of time. It's fine, whatever. So, no vehicles, because you can. Um, anything up here? Not too much. Refugees. We've assimilated about. Well, I got 4,200 still to assimilate, which is fine. Go and do that for now. Uh, oh, yes. The Great Falls Restoration. Lakota Auxiliaries. And we'll see what they say. I'm quite concerned that we can't core this stuff. At 100%. At over 95%. As a core of the MacArthur Department. Well, it is a core. Is it? No, it's Colony State. Oh, why is this a Colony State? Well, we paid a court, so... Does it make sense for us to court? Not really, but you know what? It's still a game mechanic. There you go. Oopsie. Am I supposed to do that? Eh. I'll see. So then... That should also be a colony seat then, too, right? Hold on. I guess it doesn't make sense for us to core anything here. Uh, is that because of this? Go, young man. Lung doctrine, research speed, no. Yeah. Alright, well, whatever. Pacify the state. Okay, so, okay, my bad. No, we don't get a core. Oh, it's my fault. We pacify states. Gives no resistance, but not added as a core. So that's my bad. Maybe I should not have made those cores. My bad. But even then, like, we, you still couldn't even pacify it. Oh, oh well. Okay, so now we can pacify this one as well. My bad. I should have not cored those. But I don't know. I'm still learning this. I'll redo this again someday, someday as well. Uh, three, three. Anything else down here? Yeah, grab some more collars. I love collars. Um. Oh, San Francisco chapter. Ooh. Elder Francis. That's pretty cool, actually. The twenty two seventy nine is not bad. Grab some suppression bows, even though we're not even using that at all. Well, maybe we should do some riders here and there. Got one more military factory. Not bad. Uh, actually, yeah, I don't like that. You should still be able to do this. Maybe it's just oversight by the devs, but you should still be able to pacify the state no matter what. So that's why coring is not necessarily t forcing it to core. Maybe not necessarily a bad thing for us, so at least that's what it seems like. But we'll see what these guys say as well. In the meantime, <clears throat> here we go, uh, focuses. The old museum. Bozeman was close, ho once home to the American Computer Robotics Museum. At times, these were obsolete artifacts. Today, these are, are obsolete artifacts. Today, these old devices are the way sounds cutting edge and beyond. Refurbished highway. Montana's great highway has fallen into disarray, but Martha Santiago will spare no expense and prove the lives of her citizens. It also helped the, ar helped the army travel, of course, which is a nice benefit. A very nice benefit. <coughs> so I will be coring some of these states until that's an oversight by the devs and they fix it, and they will. The Mighty Braves, sending rocks and warriors to us in return for our offer. How wonderful. They'll gladly protect MacArthur's interests, even if Chicago might not see it that way less. It's important to rely on friends. Not bad. Uh, we'll do the airships. Subsidize the tellurium mines. Tellurium is one of the Earth's rarest metals, but invaluable for complex metallurgy. By loading the first families our equipment, they can expand their mining operations and supplies with this precious metal. Hire us to Bozeman Hot Springs. Heaven's Gate thinks geo geothermy. Geothermal energy is the stuff of miracles, but it's nothing of American ingenuity. Uh, Martha Santiago will gladly provide heat and light to the refugees in town. And the convoys. Neither rain nor sorrow, or, or rain nor snow, nor rain or gang should keep the convoys in Missoula from the rope. Ain't they a beautiful sight? And one day we're going to roll into this trucking convoy across America, and we'll probably start just a flying on high chapel because we can. Airships, baby. The brother traverses the waste with a vast fleet of airships. So last for us, we're forced to rely on jetter craft, vertebrates, and mechanized units. Uh, until now, thanks to to the Wells of Liberty. Very cool.
A letter to MacArthur. To our neighbors in differing steel, heed these words carefully, for this will be your only warning. Lay down your arms and surrender. We are unlike our brother and brethren. We are something more. We are sisters of steel. Or sisterhood of steel. A friend to all and an to tyrants. Uh, we believe in fair unity and the relinquishment of needless violence or selfish claims, so that's why we extend this offer to you. Join us to build a greater home and future by our side, cave into insolence, and I promise that we will bury your remains in the mountain. Huh. This was yours, a sentinel honor. Oh. Well, then. A fair agreement, we just die. We shall never surrender to any opposition. Well, our soldiers aren't even on the line yet. Not good. Because they're taking so god dang long, so defend against the Brotherhood. We stand on now at the precipice, a brother to steal, and the arrogance seek to replace our, your safety and freedom under the enclave of tyranny and oppression. Let them come, wave upon wave, a uh, wave upon traitorous wave. We'll crash against MacArthur's walls, the brother to steal will fall and fail. God bless the enclave, God bless America. Old museum, nice. Sure, why not? Well, time for some new, some new world hopes. Wait, what's going on? Oh! Oh! Well, that's not good. That's really, really, really not good. Well, if that's the case... Huh. Interesting. I guess, if anything, we could have really just... Um, pile drive from the top here. Now, this is definitely something interesting, which I wasn't really prepared for this at all, actually. In all honesty. Really wasn't prepared. Um, they'll probably do a lot of this off screen then. So, just to reassess ourselves and see if we can actually make this a little bit more manageable. Because right now, that's a lot of divisions. We have 23. I wasn't sure how many we were supposed to make. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll hopefully beat up this entire stupid, stinking faction. Thanks for watching. Have a great Sunclave rest of your day.